In this video, we'll review payroll calculations and journal entries associated with payroll. Here we have payroll information for the pay period ended November 30th, 2026. We have our gross wages. This is before any taxes or withholdings are deducted. Then we have the federal income tax that has been deducted, pension contributions that have been deducted from the employee's checks, Social Security tax withheld, Medicare tax withheld, and then we're given additional information. State unemployment tax rate is 3.1%. Federal unemployment rate is 0.8%. Unemployment taxes are owed on only 15% of these total wages. That means that some of it has already been paid earlier in the year. So for A and B, we are to journalize the November 30 payroll and then journalize the employer's payroll tax expense. So these taxes that are being withheld from the employee's check are not expenses of the employer. They are withheld from the employee's checks. These are the items, especially the federal income tax and Social Security, Medicare, that are reported on the employee's W-2 at the end of the year. And the employee hopefully gets a little bit of that federal income tax back. Now, what we know also is there would be some state tax withholding. This problem doesn't show that, but that would be there as well. It is withheld, so that makes it a liability for the company. They do not get to keep that money. They must remit it to the proper organizations. On November 30th, we'll recognize wages expense with a debit. Remember, our debits go over on the left. Credit goes on the right-hand side. Then we have the federal tax withheld, federal income tax withheld, payable. I have the word payable here so that you'll recognize these are liabilities. The company doesn't get to keep them again. They must remit them to the proper organizations. The pension is a payable also. It was withheld from the employee's check. Social Security payable. All these numbers are just listed. We are just allocating them to the proper accounts. Medicare tax payable, 1500 And then we have salaries payable. The salaries payable is going to be equal to the total amount minus the sum of all these other items. So the sum of and I'm just going to select these in Excel. Basically, you're adding them all together and then subtract them. So we have to solve for that number, 173000 This is basically the take-home pay for the employees. Now let's examine the payroll tax expense. These are additional expenses that the employer incurs when they have employees, in addition to the 200000 wages expense. So the total amount of tax expense will skip for a moment and go to the Social Security tax payable. An employer must match the amount that is withheld from their employee's check and deposit that also themselves. They are liable for a matching of the Social Security tax and Medicare tax. We withheld $12,000 in Social Security taxes. The employer must also pay this amount. And then the Medicare tax payable, $1,500 was withheld from employees. An additional $1,500 must be paid by the employer. So for Social Security, they're actually going to pay $24,000. For the Medicare tax payable, they're actually going to pay in $3,000. They have to match it. And then they have the state unemployment tax. $15,000, we were told not to take it on the full $200,000. It's a little later in the year, so only the $15,000 will have that state unemployment tax calculated on it. In the cell, you can see up in the formula bar, I've just put in the 15,000 times the 3.1% would be 0 .031. That equals out to $465. The federal unemployment is point zero, was 0 0.8. When you take 0 0.8 and you divide by 100, you get 0 0.008. So it's a much smaller number. You can see in the formula bar, I went up and added this in. So the 15,000 times 0 0.008 would be 100, and that is going to be the company's liability. Nine total of these items need to be summed up, added together, and this will be the additional payroll tax expense that an employer is liable for.